Good morning. I feel like I'm supposed to say, am I still muted or something like that? <laughs> To those of you in the room, welcome to Texas A&M University, San Antonio. To those of you in cyberspace, I not only welcome you, but wish you a strong internet connection. <laughs> I'm Mary Kay Cooper, and I'm the Director of Alumni Engagement here at the University, and it's my privilege to be your Mistress of Ceremonies this morning. I want to first thank those of you who sent in nominations for the three awards we are presenting today. I also want to thank our university president, Dr. Cynthia Tignante Madsen, for joining us today to present the Crystal Autolus to each honoree. Lastly, thank you to the selection committee for making some truly difficult decisions about how to prove your honor in this morning. The nominations really will all be wonderful. I want to welcome two special guests, NASA awardees. One, Tony Villarreal, who's a two-time Jack Iron, and he was one of our distinguished alumni last year for our 10th anniversary. And joining us in cyberspace is Elizabeth de la Ochoa, who was our original recent graduate awardee. So thank you both for coming. As we continue to do now, we truly serve the south side of San Antonio. And I'm sure as many of you can understand, we had students from many walks of life. Even though class sizes back then were quite small, our students came in with very diverse backgrounds. And Tim Ingram was no exception. I first remember Tim, a rather imposing fellow, but never said a word. He always sat in the very back of the classroom. A good thing there was a wall back there, because if not, he'd be even further back. Yet, he was always watching and listening, but never said a word. Who's this guy, I wondered, who seemed more shy than indifferent? Always in class, always on time, always turning in work. A big, imposing, 33-year-old fellow. Someone you'd want guarding your back if walking down a dark alley in the middle of the night. In the fall of 2010, when I first met him, Tim was taking arguably the most difficult class in our program, and he was doing very well. 
Well, okay, let me rephrase that. He was scoring higher than all of the other 29 students in the class. As the semester progressed, I had a few conversations with Tim, and without going into details, he told me he made a commitment to get his life on track, and this was one of those starting points. I wondered how long that commitment would last. And here we are, 10 years later, and Tim has far exceeded anything I could have imagined. I'll never forget Tim turning in quality work in statistics, conducting his own research project, trying to find out if lean mass has anything to do with anaerobic power. He submitted every assignment and participated in every lab. Some who know Tim may find it hard to believe he even ran our one mile time trial. <laughs> I'll leave that up to you to calculate his time from seconds, but man, let me tell you, he killed our strength tests. As he progressed through our program, he became a model student, interacting with professors and other students, and yes, all the while still sitting in the very back of the class. I asked him to stay in touch after graduation, and soon after, he started on his dream of owning his own fitness center. Like most startup businesses, it was small and he struggled, but with the determination he showed in our classes with us, he has created a niche in San Antonio where strength competitors, fitness enthusiasts, and those seeking a better health profile gravitate. I nominated Tim for the Distinguished Alumni Award because I believe he's the characteristic of the AM San Antonio student body, and he did not allow underprivileged to hold him back. I feel he's distinguished and that he represents the blue collar worker in a business setting. He provides hope for all those who have aspirations, just as he did. And he's distinguished in that he models the success of the university. On behalf of myself and the AM San Antonio Health and Kinesiology Program, thank you, Tim. The honor is mine. For me, school was never something I loved. I underachieved in school, never wanted to be there, never applied myself, and, and that mindset lasted for a long time. I was walking to class one day, and I thought to myself, why do you always tell yourself that you hate school? I'm about to go into a classroom with a lot of my friends. I'm about to go learn things that I really want to learn. School is fun and you should enjoy this. And right there, that light bulb, when that went off, I don't think I ever made a B again. I changed my course at that moment. And because of that experience, I can help other people change. It really is a mindset. My name is Timothy Ingram IV. I am the owner of Heavy Metal Fitness. We're here in my gym in San Antonio, Texas. If you're in San Antonio and you want a place to really reach your physical potential, it's gonna take a lot more than just the equipment. It's gonna take a certain atmosphere. It's gonna take a certain knowledge base from the coaches and other lifters. We do our best to make sure that everybody that trains within heavy metal is feeling supported, they feel welcomed and motivated. My gym is different from other gyms because we prioritize strength training, competing in strength athletics, performance basically. Within the walls of this gym, we've had just some tremendous athletes compete representing our banner. We've had several podium places at the Arnold Classic. We've had world championships in the IPF, which is pretty much the most prestigious federation in powerlifting. We've had strongman world championships. We're at nationals for both powerlifting and strongman every year. These athletes are truly incredible. 
A lot of what I've come to know has simply come from the trial and error of becoming as strong as I could possibly be, coupled with the classic education I received at Texas A&M of San Antonio. That combination together has put me in this position. Right from day number one, I had a guidance counselor named John, and he was just phenomenal. He was upbeat, he was positive, and at that moment in time, I wasn't even sure I was gonna be accepted in the school. I hadn't really applied myself to the best of my abilities, so I was coming into this situation with a grade point average I was a little bit embarrassed of. John was super helpful. We sat down, we looked at my criteria as far as graduating, it made me realize that I wasn't as far as I thought I was. A lot of the courses that I still needed were applicable to what I wanted to learn. And he really created my first impression of that school. Like I felt welcomed, I felt excited to be there. He made me feel part of the institution right away. My degrees in exercise science, I chose exercise science simply because my passion is strength, performance, speed, power. And to be the best in that field, you have to have a great understanding of the physiology required to coach high-level athletes. My professors at Texas A&M of San Antonio were definitely demanding and they were challenging, but in the best of ways. Dr. Smith in particular, Dr. Kendrick also, they wanted a lot from us because they knew that we were a representation of the university. From day one, I walked into Dr. Smith's class and I remember him giving kind of an overview of what the class was gonna be. And I remember him telling us that if you earn a 69.9, then it's going to be a 69.9. He's not gonna round up, that's the score that you earned. And when he said that, it made me realize that there's no more games. This is real work, this is something I'm gonna have to earn, but yet it was what I wanted to learn, so I was up for it. To be a successful coach or personal trainer, I really believe that you have to have a deep grasp of biomechanics, of exercise physiology, and what exactly the demands are of the training. What separates a great coach from your run-of-the-mill personal trainer is science. You have to have a, a good grasp of science, and my professors at Texas A&M both came from a research background, and so science was just critical for our classes. Research was critical to pass our classes. Once you have a classic understanding of what the exercise and or training or the energy demands of the activity you're doing, then creating performance enhancement is a lot easier. Dr. Smith and Dr. Kendrick, when I say they helped change my life, I'm not playing and that's a serious statement. They challenged me and because I rose to meet their challenge, it gave me a lot of confidence. Definitely was the first time in my life that I was exceeding in school. Not just exceeding, but thriving in the face of hard classes and professors that really wanted a lot from me. I'm truly honored to win the distinguished Alumnus Award for 2020. To me, it's a tremendous honor that I don't take lightly. I think about all the people that have helped me get to this point. Without their support, without their love, without their energy, and their occasional uh, kick in the butt, this would have never happened. When I really reflect on these type of awards, I think about how proud I am and the hard work that went into it. But more so, I think about my parents, they pushed education and they didn't give up on me and they wouldn't let me off the hook and I needed that. I would have no doubt quit a long time ago. I think about my wife and how only good things have happened for me since I've been with her. She's made me a better person who's been with me for the last 12 to 13 years every single step of the way and has endured every challenge with me. In a certain sense has more strength than I do because she's the person that I rely on when, when things get hard, and I'm just thankful she's in my life. When I think about the job that Texas A&M of San Antonio is doing, producing high-level professionals, to be 100% to be honest, those professors did an outstanding job preparing us for the real world. I hope that I'm representing them as well as I can. They definitely did right by me. I'm thankful for the support I received from my faculty and I'm proud to be a Jaguar. Thank you. I'm sure you will agree.
agree that Tim is so deserving of this award. I'd now like to introduce Dr. Douglas Carter. Dr. Carter is an assistant professor in our College of Business. He'll be introducing our 2020 recent graduate awardee, Christopher A. Castro, class of 2017. Dr. Carter? When the call goes out to the faculty and staff to nominate and as an alum also, to nominate this year or any year's awards, you take this very seriously because these are people that you are putting forward that will represent what it is that the mission of the university happens to be. And that is my theme this morning uh, in nominating Chris and in presenting him to you is the fact that he represents. As a result of a transformative experience that Chris had while participating in the European Innovation Academy 2017, he was reminded of his commitment to continuing his education while mentoring others wishing to pursue an international study abroad opportunity. The value of international experience has manifested itself into a scholarship money that Chris has donated back to the university and to the College of Business for the purpose of supporting current students who need financial assistance to make a study abroad opportunity possible. What's more, Chris donated his time to assist students and continues to donate his time to assist students as they prepare for the European Innovation Academy experience by acting as a College of Business Study Abroad Alumni Ambassador. Chris' desires to help current Jaguars has been extended to his becoming a finance major mentor for freshmen. Chris states, my goals are to become a reliable team player, implement what I learned from my business studies at Texas A&M San Antonio, and grow to become a leader. I also aspire to become a subject matter expert and learn as much as possible from my peers and leaders at Zachary. Chris is current director at Zachary, a fellow alum of A&M San Antonio, Mr. Randy Ramirez, uh, uh, shares the following. Chris currently works as an IT business analyst for Zachary Group. In that role, Chris serves as a liaison between the information technology enterprise support team and end business system users working in different Zachary Group companies, mainly Zachary Industrial Inc., Zachary Engineering Company, and JVIC. He interfaces with end users to understand their businesses and process requirements, documents his requirements, and then looks for innovative solutions to automate manual processes and fill current system gaps. In order to do his job correctly, which he does, Chris has to not only understand the business environments and industries Zachary works in, but also understand the technical landscape of our business systems and translates the business needs into system requirements. It is a role that requires a diverse skill set that range from interpersonal skills, critical thinking skills, and technical system skills in both a domestic and international capacity. And as a sign of Chris's work ethic, he has recently been appointed his division champion for the 2020-2021 United Way campaign at Zachary. Chris states his most important personal achievement up to this point is being featured in the Torino newspaper in Italy and on the European Innovation Academy internet site for placing six out of 95 teams from around the world in 2017 at the conclusion of his team's new product validation in Rome and pitch in Turin. So I mentioned earlier represent. So this is a little side story about representing in Rome. If you've never been to Rome, please get there. But if you've been there, you understand the magnitude of what Rome represents. And we were catching a train in northern Italy in Torino at 6 o'clock in the morning to present at a convention hall at 2 o'clock that afternoon in Rome. It was a morning much like this. It was foggy. It was misty. It was humid. It was July in Italy. And I had on my suit, and the other students had on their suits, and Chris comes walking out of our pensione with a suit bag. And I said, well, what are you doing with that suit bag? He goes, it's not getting wrinkled. I bought this suit for this event. And he had indeed bought that suit in Italy to represent there in Rome. And he says, it will not be wrinkled. It will be pressed. It will be sharp. And I'm representing the university in Rome. As a professor, you can only hope for these type of activities and for these, this type of representation. Needless to say, I was damp from the rain. 
It was humid. It's a five-hour train ride. I was slightly wrinkled when we walked into that convention hall in Rome. But Chris was not. He was crisp and clean and ready to go. And he was on point. He represented us well. He represented his team. And again, the team ended up sixth out of 95 teams. And there were five people per team. So there were 500 students from five different continents in the, in the world that were there at this event in Torino and Rome. And as I was preparing my introductory remarks for Chris last night, I was reminded of an inspirational quote from one of my personal heroes, President John F. Kennedy, who is credited with saying, I think the success of any school can be measured by the contribution the alumni make to our national life. I'm looking forward to watching Chris continue to contribute, and thank you for representing. Thank you, Dr. Carter. Very inspirational. Um, Chris, before you give your remarks, will you and Dr. Madsen please stand so that Dr. Madsen can present your award for a photo opportunity? She'll then take the obelisk back off you, but I promise we'll give it back. And now to hear from Chris Castro. I also would like to thank my father, also an alumni from Texas A&M San Antonio, ambassadors and masters. Thank you for always pushing me to do better and to be better, putting structure in my life and discipline. We, we have a little saying. He would, he would ask me, what do we do here? And my reply, we do what we have to do so we could do what we want to do. That small phrase has kept me on track multiple times in doing things that I really don't want to do, but they have to be done. Also, I'd like to thank my mother, Sharon Castro, for everything that she's done, for being a counselor when needed, for being a counselor when needed, for being the calm during my storms, always being selfless, and for always believing in me and my crazy dreams. She knows I have a lot of them. Raising three men on her, raising three men for her, I'm pretty sure it was hard, but I'm sure I can speak for my brothers when I say, thank you for everything you've done. Next, I would like to thank my girlfriend, Arlene Duran, also, Texas A&M San Antonio alumni, for sticking with me through my educational journeys, for always believing in me and, and telling me don't give up when I wanted to quit, because we've all wanted to quit. Um, and also for trying to keep me organized. That part we're still working on. Uh, furthermore, I also like to thank Dr. Douglas Carter for everything he's done for inspiring the next alumni at Texas A&M San Antonio. Thank you for being a great, a great mentor, a great friend, a great professor. It means a lot. I also would like to thank you for planting the seed into me to go ahead and study abroad. Because of you, I, I was able to see a different part of the world through a different lens. And because of that, I'll be forever indebted to you. Finally, I would like to thank Texas A&M San Antonio for being a presence here in the South Side and investing in the community I call home. Working full time and getting an education is tough. I think most of us could agree. But because of Texas A&M San Antonio offering the flex classes, the online classes, and all sorts of other classes that we were able to take here, I was still able to work and provide for myself and still get an education. We thank you. We thank you for offering those opportunities for the working class. Thank you. I also would like to, I also would like to take the opportunity to thank you for allowing me to study abroad. Because of that opportunity, I've been able to work on international projects with my current employer, Zachary, without Texas A&M San Antonio being here, I wouldn't have been able to meet everyone I've met from here locally as well as internationally. Thank you. Texas A&M San Antonio has opened so many doors, not just here, not just the next door, not just here in San Antonio or in the state, but internationally. And it means a lot knowing where I come from. I also like to say thank you very much for select me for the Texas A&M San Antonio Alumni Award. It's more than my name on a piece of paper or a speech that I give. It shows that hard work really does pay off. Even though those sleepless nights, I didn't like going through them, but they were not in vain. Also, the sacrifices I've had to, I've had to endure, I see, the, I see the, me reaping the benefits from it. Thank you, Dr. Cooper, for everything you've, you've done in this great organization. 
Also, thank you, Matson, for everything you've done, not just for the university, but for the community. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris. You truly do represent what we want to see here from our newer alumni. Our last introducer this morning is Mr. Josh Wagner, class of 2009 and longtime friend of our final awardee. Josh will be introducing Irma Iris Duran de Rodriguez, class of 2014. She is our 2020 Spirit of the Jaguar Award winner. Josh? I've had the pleasure and privilege of knowing Irma for over 20 years, going back to our days at Zachary Middle School. But before I get into any long stories or long-winded explanations of how awesome she is, I do have to say one thing. Irma, thank you so much for introducing me to my wife. <laughs> you see, while the universe in middle school had conspired to keep my wife and I in separate classes, Irma had taken it upon herself to make sure that both of us were in attendance at her quinceanera. Before we get too mushy, let me add a few details. We wouldn't start dating for another eight and a half years. However, my deep friendship with my wife started back then. I remember telling Irma and other mutual friends once we started dating, and we were meeting with a resounding, it's about time. They didn't question it, they didn't judge it, they just knew that we were meant to be. The fun part about this is thanks to my wife, I now have direct access to twice as many fun stories about Irma growing up. However, I won't get into any of the embarrassing details today. What I can tell you is that this award seems tailor-made for Irma. Excellent service and volunteerism. It's not just a vague concept to her. It's how she's always run her life, and she does it with full enthusiasm. Now, I can't tell you if she joined ROTC in high school for the glamorous uniforms or the ease of knowing that there was one outfit a week that you didn't have to plan, even if it did require extra pressing. But I can tell you that she was a fierce and dedicated cadet at both Taft and Clark High Schools. I see this dedication even today, when she's helping out with her daughter's Girl Scout troop and fundraisers, and actually leading those efforts, not just passing around a form, but working with the troop, driving them around, firmly committed to giving it her best effort. I think on Ralph Waldo Emerson's words, enthusiasm is the mother of effort, and without it, nothing great was ever achieved. I can tell you she is destined for greatness. Even her leisure time is a prime example of this. A couple of years ago, I got a call about participating in a trivia event. Now, if you ask anyone who knows me, they'll tell you that my head is full of useless, trivial knowledge. But this request was special. It was a Star Wars trivia night at a local pub. Irma, knowing my affinity for Star Wars franchise, was inviting me to join her and some others on her team. Now, at this time, I was a new father, so being present anywhere outside the house was a big deal, and I dressed as I normally would for a pub trivia competition. Not Irma. She took this time to dress up in a very Star Wars Padme Leia inspired ensemble. Now we're not talking Comic-Con style costuming or even to the extent of her regalia for official fiesta events. But the hair was definitely done. And done well. Nobody would have known if she decided not to do it, but everyone would have been happy just to be with her. But she wanted to give it that extra effort. That's who she is. She's not just present, she's leading the charge. She's the definition of giving 110%. You've likely been able to read in her bio about her engagement with various local leadership groups, her participation with the Fiesta Commission, and her daughter's lives. What you can't see from a short bio is her working late at night on a speech, city proposal, or project, and still making time to help with her daughter's homework. How she organizes fun gatherings to watch World Cup games or other spe special events. Or how she eloquently discusses the problems facing young girls publicly all the while sharing stories of the paranormal and the weird that she encounters. I'm fairly convinced that she is a magnet for this type of activity. I don't know how many countless people have had their lives affected by knowing Irma. I'm an auditor, I like math, and I can't begin to calculate her impact on the community. What I can tell you is that my life was impacted for the better by knowing Irma, and I've got three huge examples to support this claim. My wife Kate, my son Owen, and my daughter Eleanor. Her tireless efforts to improve the community around her to make her family a priority, and her unending enthusiasm. These are just a few reasons why she deserves this award. I'm honored to be her friend, to be a fellow Jaguar, 
and it's my pleasure to introduce Irma as this year's Spirit of the Jaguar recipient. Congratulations. Thank you so much for being here with us today, Josh. Really appreciate it. Irma, will you and Dr. Masson please stand so that she can present your award for a photo opportunity? If I recall correctly, didn't I make you do a group dance with us in case uh, to a Freddie Fender song? <laughs> Quite possibly. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I think it was Freddie Fender or it was Renee Renee, one of the two. <laughs> so I say have you introduce me at every event. So thank you so much for that. And uh, I'm honored to not only be back at the halls of this sacred institution, but also here on stage with this group of great men and Dr. Madsen, who is a powerhouse. I'm humbled to sit six feet apart from men making an impact in our society. My journey to the stage is long, so bear with me. I'm going to start from the beginning. <laughs> the spirit of the Jaguar, as was mentioned before, is awarded to someone provided excellent service to the community and volunteerism to the university and community. I am constantly told by people they wish they had my energy and my compassion to devote their time to helping others. But it's not their style. It's not about your style. It's not even about having the time or energy. I'm not any more helpful than anyone else in this room. I might be even less helpful. I'm a human. I get tired. I get discouraged. Sometimes I want to quit it all and do something for me. But because I am human, I am part of an ecosystem. And in that ecosystem, two things drive me. Respect for those that have gotten me here and leaving my system a better place than the next generation. The first is honoring who got me here. Of course, I start with my parents. They have instilled the truth that we are not alone in the world and to be there for others. They taught me hard work, competitiveness, and honesty. I think a little too much honesty. I don't think they like that. <laughs> <laughs> Though I try not to ask for everything, I know they'll be there within a moment's notice when, they need, when I need a help. They taught us to care for the closest to us in the moment of need as they provide for us when we need the most. My brothers in the audience, by definition, we're not considered close. We don't talk, we don't visit. He scolds me all the time, even though I'm the oldest. But that's the way we are. We have a silent bond. He's willing to drop everything regardless of his commitments, if I need him. From attempting to fix a computer the weekend before the first day of school, to being the first person when I woke up from surgery, undergoing cancer treatments, he's there in the moment's notice. A person that opened my world to community service that is not here today is Ms. Gloria Andrade Merrill. Approaching my final days in my undergraduate studies, I imagined myself taking a job overseas. I would join my classmates in the corporate world and live in exotic locations. But this cannot be done without any experience. I called every single board member of the Hispanic Chamber at the time, looking for internships, hoping these community leaders would have some words of wisdom. Ms. Merrill not only took my call, she met me that same day. By the next, I was representing her at meetings. This woman didn't have to answer the phone. She didn't have to meet me. She certainly didn't have to trust a stranger with her small business. But she extended a hand to someone starting in life. She introduced me to a world I had never seen. Without her, I met entrepreneurs that were the backbone of San Antonio. Hardworking individuals that weren't born with my privilege that needed that boost for success. The skills I learned at university were better suited to help improve my community, so I decided to stay home. Which led me to here. Musa. I almost didn't make it here despite always wanting to be part of the A&M system. A chance encounter in the break room, actually me taking the wrong turn trying to find the restroom while pregnant, had me continuing my education and thinking about a second career. But I actually told myself to forget it. I had a toddler at home, I was pregnant again, I had just received a promotion at work, and we were in search of a new home. I actually lived with my parents for nine months in my old room with a family of four. <laughs> It would be impossible to juggle work, school, motherhood, and afford it. Curtis, my daughter's father, quit when he excuses. With entrance exam waivers, a reimbursement program available, if I kept my grades up, meant I had no reason not to try. He reminded me that I had two girls I had a set example for. Speaking of you, Temusa, the support group from the faculty is phenomenal. 
professors followed up even after passing their class or graduated to ensure my goals were met. That feeling, that energy is hard to explain. Knowing there are people out there that care enough to ensure you exceed your goals, to ensure your success. That's a burst of energy for anyone. The drive to succeed and to mentor is because of those that have never let me falter. Regarding mentors, I have one of the best. My mentor, Deputy City Manager Maria Villa Gomez. Despite managing one of the largest cities in the nation, she makes time to mentor myself and other city employees, encouraging our development. With her priorities, she doesn't have to set everything aside for us, but she does. Once again, it is someone with true spirit of volunteerism and community service pushing my generation towards success. I surround myself with classy, intelligent, driven, assertive people that came to support me today. Brandy, Heather. <laughs> people I look up, motivate me, and guide me. I thank them for joining me and pushing me to better myself and my environment. They are my tribe, a part of my ecosystem. I also have an Obi-Wan who always listens to me. And because of those that help me, I must help others. If you want your life to thrive, you must be an active contributor to that success of your own society. I believe that people are inherently good and that circumstances during their life have led to the choices. To create an impact in society is to nurture the most important member of that society, the child. I admit I am awkward with children. I think my kids will admit that as well. I talk to them like adults. I am transparent with them. I refuse to baby them. Volunteering with children is establishing success in the future. Research has proven that mentored children demonstrate better school attendance and reduces negative behaviors. It is not volunteering, it is investing. Investing in the future of the next generation of workers, leaders, and citizens. I have always believed in investing in our youth that have made the greatest contribution of all, my motherhood. I've been fortunate enough to raise two intelligent, mature, and responsible girls. You know, people ask me for advice in raising such great children, and I don't have the answer. All I do is give them the same respect I treat my peers and hold them to the same standards I hold for myself. Because of these two ladies in the audience, I must lead by example. I'm sure they like to have weekends where they sleep in, me too, kids, or not have to do homework in a boardroom, but I want them to learn the value of life. My dedication to the community is a bit selfish. It is because I want a better place for my kids. Through my actions now, I hope my ecosystem will be a great place for us to live. Please think about this. No matter your strengths, you have the capacity to make great impacts. You might believe you don't make any change, but for someone you do. I leave you the parting words. This country will not be a good place for any of us to live in unless we make it a good place for all of us to live in. Teddy Roosevelt. Irma, you have quite a list of accomplishments. I can't wait to see what you do next. I think we can all agree that the honorees here today are fine choices for our 2020 Alumni Award celebration. Tim, Chris, Irma, you make those of us at your alma mater very proud. Before I conclude our celebration, please know that attendees, those here in the auditorium and those joining us virtually, will also be able to receive a recording of today's ceremony to enjoy with friends, loved ones, and on into the future. Please continue to enjoy each other's company and thank you for attending. <laughs>